Welcome to Rochester, New York, the home of Kodak Eastman, situated on Lake Ontario, and creator of the finest delicacy in all the land. Hey, can I have a plate with all the garbage on it, please? That, my friends, is the garbage plate, and let me tell you, it is glorious. My name is Alex Tahu. My grandfather invented the original garbage plate called Hots and Potatoes, and my father perfected the real garbage plate. At this point, you're probably wondering what this so-called garbage plate is. I'll tell you, a garbage plate is... Let me handle this. Garbage plate starts with your choice of sides from home fries, french fries, macaroni salad, or beans. Then you pick your meat. Hot dogs, hamburgers, cheeseburgers, whatever's on the menu. Then you add your toppings from mustard, onions, and hot sauce. Ketchup and Red Hot is optional. Then add two pieces of Italian bread and butter, and you're all set to go. Over the years, we've had a lot of different kind of garbage plates. We actually had our sardine plate years ago. I don't think you could get much crazier than sardines. The best part of this business is, of course, the customers. Without them, we'd be nothing. The place was established to give people a lot of food at a reasonable price. For years, people have come in here hungry that didn't have any money. My father always fed them. That's really sweet, Alex, but let's get back to the garbage because I'm really wondering how many calories are in a plate. I really don't know. Some people have said 3,000. I don't think it's that high, but I guess I'd have to be a nutritionist to tell you. But I will say this is the only place you can get a garbage plate. Any other plate in Rochester is a copycat. We trademarked it, so now it's world famous. Trademarking garbage? Genius. So this is a story about butter that you never knew you always wanted. Hopefully. We begin before the appetizers arrive, when the bread comes, with the butter. But this butter, this is the star of the meal. It can be found in a town in France called St. Malo, from a family called Baudier. Jean-Yves is the main butter guy these days. Look at all these different kinds of butter the third generation in a line of butter making royalty. My family fait du beurre depuis euh, très longtemps puisque mon grand-père était beurrier. Alors le beurre est pas simplement important, c'est un aliment icône de la Bretagne. And the butter here is different. The butter we are going to talk about, finally, right, is full of seaweed and used by some of the best chefs in the world. C'est le beurre aux algues. Alors, il s'agit de trois algues principalement, la wakame, la douce et la laitue de mer. Il y en a une qui vient de la rance, sinon les autres algues viennent de Rostov et de la mer d'Iroise. Nous étions les premiers à inventer le beurre aux algues. But then something happened, something big. Joël Robuchon. Joël Robuchon was a French chef. In 1989, he was named chef of the century. He has 32 Michelin stars, more than a dozen restaurants around the world, 19 cookbooks, he ran a syndicated television show in France, and perhaps, at the end of the day, he will be best remembered for his mashed potatoes. Ah bah c'est une... Euh, ça fait un drôle d'effet. Savoir que euh, l'un des plus grands chefs de cuisine au monde euh, s'intéresse à votre travail, euh, sincèrement, c'est quelque chose d'émouvant, d'une part, et deuxièmement, qui est intéressant et important puisqu'il vous oblige à devenir excellent. J'ai eu le, le, la chance d'arriver à un moment où euh, les beurriers français euh, avaient délaissé le beurre de table. Tous nos beurres sont, sont façonnés euh, à la main avec des palettes. Et moi, ma méthode de travail a, a permis aux grands chefs français de remettre le beurre sur table. Alors que je suis revenu dans euh, une fabrication ultra artisanale. I feel like the one question everyone who is still watching this video wants to know is what it tastes like. What does seaweed butter taste like? Le beurre aux algues, c'est un, un goût puissant, euh, iodé. Euh. Vous savez, quand vous mangez du beurre aux algues, je vous invite à fermer les yeux. Manger du beurre aux algues, c'est une promenade au bord de l'eau avec les pieds dans l'eau. Le beurre est un, un amplificateur de goût. Il permet à un plat euh, de prendre euh, tout un, un univers différent. Le toucher avec mes mains. Il y a, il y a, je ne connais rien de plus sensuel que le beurre. Hormis ma femme.
This is pizza. Now before you pizza purists destroy us in the comments, please open your mind and let me explain. This is Zanzibar pizza. Many people in the only know Italian pizza. We call it Zanzibar pizza because of the materials, because other materials is only from Zanzibar. Like Italian pizza, but it's same, same, but different. Meet Mohammed. He is the best pizza maker in Zanzibar and is pretty well known around his hometown. I'm famous because I make the best pizza, also because I have a good smile and so on. Oh, I didn't know I was with a celebrity. I'm a king of pizza, master chef, master pizza. Anyway, Mohammed is a fixture at the Foradani Garden Night Market, making pizza both sweet and savory for over 10 years. I make a different type of pizza, like 20 or more than 20. Every morning, Mohammed goes to the local market for the very best and fresh ingredients in order to make his one-of-a-kind homemade Zanzibar pizza pies. After that, I take my chop chop, vegetable like carrot, onion, green pepper, fresh tomato, and then I mix in the center. And then I put the mayonnaise, cheese, and the egg. And then I take the beef with the, my spice masala. And then I mix together. And then I close for all sides. I take it. And then I put for the barbecue. The dough for Zanzibar pizza is actually chapati, an unleavened bread which is also made by hand. I take my flour and the water, I mix only flour and the water. After that, I've got the bowl, big and small. I make like a small chapati because it's like a supporter. It helped me to carry pizza to put for the barbecue. Ooh, that sounds good. Sanzba pizza is the best in the world. I feel happy because of the yummy, yummy, tam tam. And that, my friends, is pizza. Zanzibar Pizza. Hello everyone and welcome to the Sun Glow here in Bicknell, Utah. My name is Bessie Stewart and today we're going to make our famous pickle pie. Pickle pie is a dessert. It's not the sweetest pie we have, but it is the most original. It took a lot of imagination, I think, to invent a dessert pie with a pickle in it. The original owner found the recipe in a magazine. She didn't like the recipe at all, so she changed it around. And now the pickle pie is the very best. As far as I know, we are the only place that makes the pickle pie. In pickle pie, you will find sugar, butter, milk, eggs, lemon extract, cornstarch, cinnamon nutmeg, and of course, the pickles. So we've got this all mixed in really nice and smooth, so now we're gonna pour it into our unbaked pie shell to put in the oven. Scrape the edges so you get all the flavor. And this one right here is one that we baked this morning. Wow. Pickle pie. This is delicious. Little tiny bit of cream on it. Just gives it that little bit of sweet and sour that you need to set off the taste buds. So, mm. The customers like the pickle pie, but I think the biggest selling point is curiosity. This looks like a delicious pie. Tastes very similar to a pumpkin pie. It's got a, a hint of, well, pickle to it. But it's not like overpowering or anything. Good flavor, kind of sweet. A little sweet. It's like super sweet. It's not really sweet. I think it's gonna sell. Bicknell is a very small little town. We are about three hours from Salt Lake City, and you don't have to live in a great big city to have good food. You have to have pride and an imagination 
It's more than just a pie. It's your work of art. It's something that you have done. And it looks pretty and it tastes good and you can be proud of it. In the United Kingdom, pies are king. Not just for the cherries and the apples that you Yanks are used to. You have your chicken, your steak and kidney, your pork pie, and in one tiny fishing town, you have this. A pie with, well, wait, is, it, is that a fish head? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Trust me, you're going to love it. In this tiny fishing village, there's a pub. And in that pub, they make stargazy pie. It's a tradition that legend has it has been happening here for hundreds of years. Which begs the question, why? The Starry Gazy Pie is a pie which celebrates Tom Bocox going out and catching seven different kinds of fish on the 23rd of December. You see, according to the legend, it had been a stormy winter. This meant no boat managed to go out and fish. So people were starving. But a local fisherman, Tom Bocox, he wasn't going to let his people die. I'm going. He went out through the gate, yes, that gate, and braved the storm, and... And caught the different kinds of fish and brought it back. He made the pie. And that brings us to today. Tracy, take it away. You get six different white fish, bake that in the oven with some herbs and some lemon zest, put a layer of grated eggs, a nice mashed potato with loads of cream in, and then you put a pastry lid put pilchards, cut them, and then you put so that the heads are coming out of the pie and the tails are coming out of the pie. You assemble all the stars around the pie. On the 23rd of December, we give it away free to thousands of people that come to the village to celebrate Tom Bocock's night. So to Tom Bocox, what a legend. Cheers, Tom. So, should we taste it? Mm, mm, that is good. Delicious. That really is quite delicious. It's good. Really good. The fish is lovely. It's most interesting. It's, it's much milder than I thought. Mmm, fish bone. 